myself. I just want to play video games. We're not even going to be in the same house. He's a ringer. He's a ringer. You got a 12 year old kid in your neighborhood. He's got nothing to do but play Halo. You need him on your fire team. That's all I'm saying. You need him. He's going to be. He's the heavy hitter. Like you just feed him the ball. That's all you do. And in that case, you feed him the grenades. Just give them to him. Throw those things. Throw those bitches. <laughs> All right, welcome to the Practical Pistol Show. My name's Ben Steger, here to answer your shooting questions. On deck today, usual cast of guys, Matt Hopkins from Kansas Hi. City. From Spartanburg, right? I always forget which city you live in, Nick. Greenville. Greenville. <laughs> Near oh, Greenville. Oh, yeah, right by Zach. You guys have that bomb-ass sushi place there. Uh, we have a good sushi place. For... It's, no, it's really good. It's really good. <laughs> I go to a lot of sushi, sushi places. places. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's really yeah. good. They mix in the citrus with the rolls, a little bit of lemon in there. It's it's very nice. I like it. And also from Kansas City, Tim Heron. I can be heard, thank God. <laughs> you had some problems with your audio. Dude, I, I don't want to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> well, what we will talk about today is something that you're eminently qualified to speak on, Tim, and that's learning a DA... Uh, trigger, right? <laughs> hey, I have a DA gun now, so... Okay, good. Ben, I'm, could you I'm talk fine. about learning uh, double action or, and single action trigger, especially the first shot? In your class, you talked about rolling your trigger finger to get the first shot accurately and quickly made, but I was hoping you could discuss learning the DA trigger during dry firing and at the range. All right, Hopkins, how did you learn to be such a baller with your double action gun? Pulled it a lot. Volume. Pulled the trigger a lot, yeah. I do want you to explain the rolling of the trigger. How? Explain that. Yes, please. Okay, uh, so what, what I'm trying to get people to do there is to not um, prep and press or stack the trigger up. So yeah. what people's natural incl inclination to do with double action guns a lot is to roll the trigger back, or I should say press it back a lot of the way till right before the hammer is going to fall, then aim a little bit, and then press again, right? And kind of complete the trigger press and the hammer falls. Uh, I get why people want to do that. Um, it's not the easiest way to do it, especially for a USPSA setting. Um, when I say roll the trigger, and a lot of times in classes I'll be like telling people, once they get the, the hammer started moving, try to keep it moving. And I use the word roll. That's a pick. So I picked that word so because what I want to see is the hammer, it just, it, it's steady pressure gets applied to it, and the hammer very smoothly comes back and then, and then falls forward instead of having like a, an uneven press where the, the, the trigger is hitching and it looks like the hammer's stopping, because once that you stop the hammer, or you stop pressing the trigger in double action mode, it's hard to get started pressing it again smoothly. So by rolling it, you just keep it, keep it moving the whole time. You can move it faster or slower, you can roll the trigger faster or slow, depending on how tough the shot is, and what your skill level is, but once you start pressing it, you start applying pressure, you just keep adding pressure until the gun goes off. I found that's the easiest way to do it. Because, I mean, it induces uh, flinching or jerking the trigger or whatever. When you you stack up the, the hammer right until it's about to fall, then you're like, okay, I'm going to aim, and then you get the sight picture you want, and then you try to press the trigger again, and it's tough to get it moving, and people end up, you know, shanking the shot off target. So that's what I mean by rolling the trigger. Sounds good. Makes sense. All right. Nick, is there anything aside from do a shitload of practice that you could do that you could say to... Uh, help, you know, shortcut the process? Um, no. Uh, I think you just need <laughs> a little practice. But honestly, uh, it's yeah. so easy. Like, there's nothing easier to dry fire than the double action trigger. You don't have to reset anything. You draw, click, holster, draw, click, or just click, click, whatever. I mean, you don't have to rack it. You don't have to do anything. It's easy as pie, <laughs> right? Now, I'll say this. Like, the one... So, my history... Um, is I came from an m &P, okay? So m &P, or probably any plastic gun, is going to have a trigger pull that's somewhere kind of between the double and, and single pull uh, most of the time for the guns that we're shooting now in terms of, like, brake weight and stuff. Yeah. Um, for me, you know, I, I thought from the start, you know, I went in with the expectation that the single pull is going to be a breeze and the double pull is going to be this thing that it's going to take a long time to, to master and all this stuff. It was really uh, 
kind of the opposite. And the reason was is that, first of all, you can dry fire the crap out of the double action pool. So I was doing that from, from day one. Um, even from day one, almost a live fire, I wasn't really that horrible with the double action trigger, not as bad as I was expecting to be. The single action trigger took me longer to, to pick up because I'm, I'm used to my trigger pull breaking at a certain weight. I pick up a new gun, and 99% of the shots are breaking at a lighter weight. So I'm still kind of got the sights settling a little bit, and I'm kind of prepping the trigger, and I'm getting bangs when, I, when I'm when i still doing prep weight pull uh, with my MP. So it took me a little while to get my, my single action rhythm settled in there. Uh, double, I really didn't have a, a huge problem with. Just dry fire the crap out of it. Um, I'm with you guys. Dry fire the shit out of it. That's a good thing. Um, one thing that I see people fall down a lot on is uh, kind of the, the common recommendation from me and a lot of other people. When you're dry firing uh, the double action, the double single guns, for the first shot, you press the trigger all the way through and you run the hammer, you know, in double action mode, obviously. Then for follow-on shots in a dry fire setting, you'd let the trigger out a little bit. Not all the way. Not You don't let it reset and pick up the hammer again. You let it, like halfway or maybe three-quarters of the way out, and then you press it in again. And by doing that, you're letting your finger off enough that you would for sure reset the trigger, and then you're pressing it again. The problem there is you're not going to get enough resistance on the trigger. So what I, I like to make sure that I do, aside from moving my finger a lot, I like to make sure I'm pressing the trigger hard back into the frame. So there's no doubt that it would go off. You know, uh, one, That's where I see people fall down a lot. It's really... I've actually seen it, I bet you I've seen 10 guys in the last couple months where in a class it's immediately identifiable where they draw and they've got a really accurate double action shot and then their their fast follow on shot with a single action will go low left hard. And almost invariably that's somebody who's dry firing every single shot in double action mode and they're not doing, they're not trying to simulate the single action mode. And when you're simulating the single action mode, make sure you press the trigger hard into the frame so for sure the gun go off. That's, that's some advice I can give you for dry fire. Be sure you do that. Uh, for live fire, I like to be... Uh, I, I like to set your first shot you know, far away and, and work on it a lot. Um, there's not really a substitute for hard work, but um, even if in a match, if you, like, if you have a choice, a lot of guys with double action guns are going to start on a close target. All things being equal, like, oh, I'll start on the close one. All right? For practice, try to push yourself to start on targets further away a lot so that even though if you can find a way out of it in a match that's convenient, you would do it, but you're going to practice you know, tougher than what you would do in a match because you know, sometimes you're going to have to start on tough targets. That's just the way it is. What do you think, Tim? Uh, so far, I'm following you guys completely. Um, I have a question for you, Ben. Oh, shit. Here we go. Go. So when you're pulling the trigger on a double action... So you pull it really fast to get it going, but slow down as you're refining the sight picture at the end. You're not ever stopping it. No, it's slowing it down. It's totally target dependent, right? Yeah. For so sure. if it's if it's like a five yard target, you can pull the gun out, and you just fucking run that bitch. Yeah. You should be gripping the gun hard enough. You just run it. Yeah. Um, for the toughest shots in the sport, you're going to draw and get a sight picture on the target and. I like to train myself to get a sight picture and then press. The reality is you're going to start rounding off the edges a little bit as you train to where if you draw down on like a 25-yard target, you'll still be kind of fixing the sight picture and you'll have started running the trigger. Right. And you're going to run the trigger a little bit slower. Like I run it a little slower the whole way through. I like to run at the same speed the whole time. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and then it's a continuum, right? So you figure out what you can get away with at any distance. You know, you, you just, through your training, drawing on targets of a lot of different distances, you learn what you can get away with. Everything from, like, five yards, just run that shit as fast as you can, to 50 yards, where it's kind of a slow, deliberate roll through the trigger. That, that I mean, that's, that's the way I like to do it. Uh, that, that works for me. I do not like the stacking technique. I haven't, I haven't seen that work well for anybody in USPSA. And back when double, and back when you were a stupid fag, if you shot a double action gun, I mean like 2008, 2009, I've I had like super squad level like multi time national champion motherfuckers telling me like, yeah, you just dump the first shot into the dirt, and I'm like, what? No, you don't do that. Don't do that. Like, what are you talking about? I have a nah, I know who that guys, was. guys do that shit all the time. <laughs> it's like I don't know if he was fucking with me or not. I suspect not. I suspect not. 
<laughs> but that was in the you're a stupid fag if you shoot a double action gun days. And now it's kind of the other way around. <laughs> like one thing I want to make a point on is Nick, I came from M and P also. I switched and it's wow. you guys are like M and P Eskimo brothers or something yeah. like that. <laughs> but the transition wasn't that bad, weapons. honestly. Yeah. There I did notice turns. a lot of SA like early shots with it though. <laughs> Tim, did you on. come from a Beretta? I came from a Beretta, Tim. Did you come from a Beretta? <laughs> no, I come from a 19. I come from a 1911, man. This is this I'm is all by fucking, myself. Oh yeah, this is only one idiot shoots Berettas in USPSA. <laughs> God damn it! But he wins with it. <laughs> that is true. Maybe we're all doing it wrong. You're not rolling your triggers back. I'm telling you, you got to roll it. Roll that shit. It's so awesome. I've been I've been playing with mine a lot. Um, what, wait, what are you talking about? What gun? Is it a CZ? I, no, I bought a, a SIG P226. So why? Uh, I like it. I think it's 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 fun. No, it's neat. Come on, seriously. No, I do. I I I legitimately bought it because I liked it a lot. So Hopkins, is he is he joshing us? I don't know, dude. It's got to be part of secret team SIG. No, no, no. Is, that, is this the USPSA <laughs> one? Is it a US? No, I don't know if I'll ever shoot it in USPSA or not. I, no, no, I, no. I, I won the, with a USPSA stamp SIG 226. I got one of those ones. No, no, no. Mine's a, a 226 Legion. So What's it's that? A, uh, it's, I don't know. It's the Legion series guns. There's a P229 and then a 226 and then a 226 <laughs> single action only gun. Are you a Navy Steel now? What's that? Are you a Navy SEAL now that you have that or something? You know, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to up my operator status. So, oh, no, it's just, it's a, a, I just, I thought it was a really cool gun, and I thought, man, I I would like to be able to relate more to, to you know, other shooters as well as even students so that shoot. Sig 226. Double action, single action stuff. Yeah, I like it. I, I really do. I like it. I like the gun. It's like lot. buying a Beretta so you can relate to other shooters. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm I've been a shooting. Uh, I've, I've been, been mulling shoot. over. I've been mulling over just buying a CZ so I can relate to other shooters. Because <laughs> <laughs> if I go any place that I can't bring a gun, almost inevitably I'm gonna end up with a CZ in my hands. That's yeah. So, I know I've been shooting it and trying to learn, or am learning the double action, single action, you know, s- skill set a lot, <laughs> and that's kind of been a lot of what. And it's obviously this isn't anything I've ever even talked to you about, Ben. You know, no, like, hey, so, no, you... Tim, you're new, so you just got your double action cherry popped, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Listening to this conversation, are you are you finding anything you can relate to? Yes. Yes. Um, I played around with the whole stacking thing, and immediately found myself like just thinking to myself, like this is slow and it's never consistent. So it's really tough to be consistent with that. I'll be honest. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I kind of just went back to <laughs> kind of the basic conversation that we've had in the past, which is just grip the living shit out of the gun and then just, pull, you know, just stroke the trigger all the way through. And lo and behold, it just that was the big thing for me. It was just like, man, don't be afraid of the whole double action thing. Just, just press through the shot. And the main thing was just using a support hand, just grip the living piss out of the gun. And amazingly, kind of like, you know, Nick, found out when he first started shooting one too is like, well oh, the double action is really not hard at all. Are you using a factory weight trigger? Um it's a it's a it? it's a slightly reduced weight trigger, but it's all it's still all factory sig. So it's a ten pound yeah, ten maybe nine and a half pound or so double action. So that's pretty that stout. Yeah, what, oh, yeah. what, what I think and if you do that you train on that for like a month, it does build up the muscles in your finger. Okay. Like your fingers do get stronger over time. And then once you go to a lighter weight trigger, it seems real easy. That's okay. my opinion. Is that the case, do you think, Hopkins? Did you develop some man hands when you switched to a CZ from, a, from an M&P? Uh, I don't know. I haven't shot an M&P in a while, so I'm not sure. Honestly, the great thing I do like about this particular gun, or just the, the trigger set on this gun that I've got, is that it stays really consistent all the way through. So, like, the trigger doesn't, you know, like, it doesn't stack. It doesn't get heavier and heavier as you get closer to breaking, you know, breaking the hammer. So it stays pretty consistent all the way through, which has made it pretty easy to learn as well. So it's just, like, keep a steady pressure on it, you know, 
pull it all the way through to the back of the frame, and bang, the gun goes off. So, and then of course the single action stuff's really not that difficult for me, coming from you know like 1911 triggers where you've got you know in total maybe an eighth of an inch of you know take up trigger break and over travel. So uh, that's not been real hard to learn. So the main thing is just learning confidence in shooting longer, you know, 25, 30, 35, 40 yard shots with it, just like straight out of the holster. 40 blank. yards. So. Jesus. Yeah. Why I'm not? Scope on. Because I can't hit shit that far away, man. It's depressing. <laughs> God damn. So, I mean, it's it's definitely it's definitely different. So, and it'll it'll continue to be something I'm striving to learn on a lot. So, but I'm um, you know it it's neat for me because it's a completely different challenge than something I'm I normally do. So. All right. Uh, have we uh, are we all done with this question, guys? Matt, you've got all you wanted to say. Yeah, I'm fine. So you said train a lot. Nick says it's not that hard, and I think I said a lot of useful things. <laughs> all right. Do you or any of the other GMs use a 22 in practice? You guys shooting 22s or not? Tim, I used to. You used to, but you quit. That's me too. I used to, but I quit that shit. Yeah. Well, it's just it's too different from everything else I shoot. So I, I don't I, find I don't find a whole lot of benefit from it now. So agree, Nick. What do you think? Um, twenty-two. Are you twenty-two? No, I, I I don't. No, I don't shoot twenty-two in practice. There's Matt, what about you? A lot of reasons, but I can't find the ammo. I wouldn't like it's cheaper to reload nine millimeter. <laughs> the most expensive JHPs. Yeah. One of the reasons the I shot, 22 ammo is not cheap like it used to. Be. Yeah, it's not at I, all. I shot 22 hard for like one summer. Like I was railing on that shit, shooting like was 500 it rounds it, a day. Well, that was when it was cheap. Was it worth it though? Yeah, it was good. Oh I, I mean, I had all these rules. Like I made the, the targets way harder. The targets were way tougher. It was single shot on everything. I used a conversion kit, so I was shooting you know the same uh, frame that I always shot. Um and and. You know the guns, the 22, 22 kits aren't super reliable for most guns. Yeah. I mean, so it was it was okay. It was good training. I don't regret doing it, but if you can load nine cheap, that was before I was reloading. So like oh, the man. price, the price of 22 went way up, and the cost of ammo for me relative to that went down. So I mean, it just it doesn't make that much sense anymore. And they don't even make conversion kits for my gun. I don't think. They make conversion kits for tampos. I think they do. Yeah. They do. I think so. I feel like, but I don't know. I, I'd be shocked if they how do don't. You, how do you not know? <laughs> because we don't give a fuck, man. <laughs> <'Cause they're, laughs> they make, I don't care. I'm not gonna use it. <laughs> it's like, all right. You know, they. It's yeah. The, the cost ammo difference is not that big of a deal. Um, you know, at least everyone's in a different situation. But for me, my Range time, especially in the winter, is, is limited, and I'm not gonna spend it, any of it shooting something else. That's well, the, the thing too about like 22s, even conversion stuff, is like magazines. Like you can't work on like mag changes. You can't work on any kind of gun yeah. handling other than just like I don't know, like kind of Ben talked about a one shot, you know, per target. So maybe working a little on transitions or like moving in out of position, like shoot a target. And, and the gun's going to be a dramatically right. different weight because right. a 22 won't cycle a full weight steel slide, so it'll right. be like in a, a gay little aluminum slide. Or zinc and, slides, or yeah, that's yeah. So th you pull the gun out, and it weighs way less than your regular gun. So I didn't even practice static draws with it, and everything I was shooting was like 30 or 35 yards, <laughs> everything. Yeah. And it was all steel too, just so I wouldn't have to reset stuff. So I mean, I I made pro I made productive sessions out of shooting 22. Don't get me wrong, but I wouldn't go through the effort now because, you know, price up for that, price down for ammo. Fuck it, you know. We got better things to do. Right. <laughs> all right, yep. guys. Great. Another another bang up podcast. Thank you for coming on, Nick. Um, thank you My for pleasure. coming on, Matt. 
Matt, you know, you can see the porn you're surfing in your glasses, in the reflection. I'm not surfing porn. <laughs> <laughs> For the audio listeners, Matt is smiling with a devilish little grin. I'm not surfing porn. Clearly surfing porn. <laughs> and thank you, Tim. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Uh, send your shooting questions to Ben Steger or at gmail.com. So email them to me and then put your question on. And then you get a half hour Dude, of this. Look at this. Over. What? Look at this. <laughs> oh my god, it's so fucking cute. Dude, just watch. Just wait. Does it go in the bowl? Yes. How does it fit in there? It's amazing. I don't know. <laughs> you see it? I want one of those so bad. I know. <laughs> You want a glass bowl full of cat? Bigger and it turns into a cat, dude. I was expecting there to be porn on that screen. Oh, <laughs> he was looking at pussy, though. We knew it. <laughs>